Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now... With over 200 episodes made, originally airing on NBC Radio Network from 1944 to 1950, we bring to you Boston Blackie. <laughs> Lever Brothers, makers of Rinso, R-I-N-S-O, Soapy Rich Rinso, presents Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris. A string of valuable pearls was stolen sometime today from this shop. Huh? I personally took them out of the safe and put them in the showcase this morning. Mm, might be an inside job. How about your employees, Mr. Gordon? Well, just those two women you see behind the counters, that's all. Huh? Mrs. Phillips, the short, gray-haired woman, has been here 20, came with us 18 years ago. Mm. And I trust both of them implicit bonded delivery service. And nobody came into the shop today except regular customers, eh? Nobody came in just to look around? Well, not today. And we always pay particular attention to strangers. Do you have any kind of a record of people who did come in? Yes, we have a complete list. Mm. You see, when someone comes in to have something repaired, we give him a receipt and keep the duplicate. And when anyone purchases an article, well, naturally, we enter that in our records, too. Good, I'd like to see... Yes, Mr. Gordon. Bring me today's sales records, please. Yes, sir. That list might give me a lead, but with my luck, I doubt it. Here's the list, Mr. Gordon. I'll take that, Mr. Phillips. Yes, sir. Let's see Mrs. Van Dyke Smythe, George Ellis. Lady Mary Andrews. Mm, let's see now. Hey, this name here. Is this man a customer of yours? Oh, yes, sir. For many years. Mm. He was in about noon to get suspicious of him. Mr. Gordon, when a string of pearls is missing from a certain store, and a certain party was in that certain store, and that certain party's name is Boston Blackie, I'm suspicious. <laughs> in a few moments, we'll meet Boston Blackie. But right now... I'm told by the best authorities that when you ladies set out to buy a dress, you're mighty particular about the color. And so it stands to reason that once you've got exactly the right color, the one that does the most for you is the expression, I believe. You do your level best to see that it stays that color by the most careful laundering. Yes, you'd pick a soap you know to be reliable, like soapy rich Rinso, for instance. Well, you see, Rinso's peppy studs get out more dirt, but they're safe for washable colors. Leaves them crisp and vivid, even after dozens and dozens of washing. And because you don't have to do any hard scrubbing or boiling with Rinso, your clothes will stay new-looking longer. So, better get Rinso before next wash day. For an easier wash day, and for a wash that's Rinso bright and <laughs> Rinso white. And now to the latest adventure of Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. <laughs> <laughs> this will kill Blackie Matthews. <laughs> I'll have him so cold he could refrigerate a warehouse. Well, I don't know, Inspector. I, I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Of course you don't know. Get this set up. Was from Gordon's jewelry shop today when he left his watch to be repaired. You going to pick him up, Inspector? Uh, no, not now. But tomorrow. Tomorrow he's going to call for his watch, and there's going to be a tray full of very valuable stones practically under his nose. And nobody will be watching him. Blackie will lift a trinket or two, and when he gets outside the store, we grab him. How does it sound? I Stand don't know, there. Inspector. I don't know. But if it was, just wasn't black. Oh, Matthews, you're fired. Blackie. Hey, Blackie. Has Fatty been here, Blackie? Has he? Well, not that I can remember. I haven't seen the inspector in a week. You know, I think I'm on his hate parade. Oh, you'll be seeing him, Blackie. Yes? The boys just tipped me off that he's after you for lifting a string of pearls from the Gordon Jewelry shop this afternoon. Well, isn't that nice? I didn't take them, Shorty. I know. But that ain't going to stop Faraday from trying to pin it on you. Oh, he does that from force of habit. By the way, I left my watch to be fixed at Gordon's this noon. Oh. 
That's probably what gave Faraday his big idea. Yes, and uh, and you say a string of pearls is missing, huh? Well, that's what the man said. Shorty, I saw one of the clerks put a string of pearls in her handbag just before she went to lunch. No kidding, Bob? Yes. Yes, it was Mrs. Phillips. Oh, you've seen her, Shorty, a little gray-haired old lady. She's uh, been at Gordon's for years. You think she went to the pearls? Oh, well, I didn't at the time. Oh, no, it couldn't be. Mrs. Phillips isn't a thief. Well, she's a dear, sweet person. Well, she looks like everybody's mother. Okay, boss, okay. I ain't the one who said she snatched them. But the pearls are gone. I'll get it, sure. Okay. Hello, Boston Blackie speaking. Oh, Mr. Blackie, this is Mrs. Phillips from Gordon's Jewelry Shop. Oh, yes. Yes, what can I do for you, Mrs. Phillips? I must see you right away. My address is 722 Alden, apartment 4B. I'm definitely at your service. Be right over. Goodbye. Going before dinner, boss? But something's cooking. You're right, Shorty. And I'm going to find out what it is. Good evening, Mr. Blackie. How do you do, Mrs. Phillips? Won't you come in? <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry Mr. Phillips isn't here. Large nights, you know. He's been here one night a week with the boys for the last 35 years. Oh, I see. Well, uh, what did you want to see me about, Mrs. Phillips? Uh, Mr. Blackie, I understand you're suspected of picking a string of pearls from the Gordon jewelry shop. I heard Inspector Faraday tell Mr. Gordon. That's right. He thinks I took them, and uh, I think you did. Oh. You see, I saw you put those pearls in your handbag. You saw me? Uh-huh. Oh, Mr. Blackie, please. Please don't say anything to anybody about this, please. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to, Mrs. Phillips, if the police get too annoyed. I'm sorry I've implicated you. It's been on my mind all evening. That's why I phoned you. Now, look. Look, suppose you just put those pearls back in the morning, and then there won't be any trouble. Now, how's that? But I can't do that. I haven't got them. Did you sell them? You know, they could be traced to you if you did. Uh, I, I didn't sell them. Oh, please. I, I can't tell you anything about them. I'm in terrible trouble. Well, why not let me help you, Mrs. Phillips? Nobody can help me. It's something that happened years ago, but I don't dare tell you about it. Don't dare, huh? No. Sounds as if somebody was blackmailing you. Does your husband know? No. No, he mustn't ever know. He'll kill me. Well, of course you know your blackmailer won't be satisfied with just the pearls, Mrs. Phillips. Next, he'll want something else. You'll never be rid of him unless he stops. I'm... Afraid to tell you anything, Mr. Blackie. What's all right? He isn't satisfied with just the pearls. He told me when I gave them to him. Oh. Uh huh. I see. He doesn't waste much much time, does he? What is it he wants now, Mrs. Phillips? Come on, please tell me. A ruby, a twenty carat ruby. We have in stock. I see. And what would happen if he didn't get the ruby? Something terrible. But I won't let it happen. It mustn't happen. I'll get him what he wants. Well, perhaps what he wants won't be there for you to take tomorrow. You mean you'd take it first? Well. Oh, you couldn't. You mustn't for your own sake as well as mine. For my sake? Yes. This morning, Inspector Faraday told Mr. Gordon that he was going to lay a trap for you tomorrow when you come for your watch. They're going to put some jewels on the counter where you can get them easily. And then they're going to arrest you as you leave the store. Oh, they are, are they? That's very interesting. You won't take that ruby now, will you, Mr. Blackie? I've got to get it to keep someone from talking. Well, I don't know, Mrs. Phillips. I, uh, I've got an idea that from now on, I'm going to do all your talking. For you. Matthew, all your cops out of sight? Yes, sir. Hey, there's Blackie's car now. Just coming along the street. You see it? Yeah, almost opposite the store. He's driving pretty slow. Come on, Matthew. Let's get out of sight. Hey. Blackie, you're crazy. Here we were yesterday, minding our own business. No pearls, no rubies, no trouble. Now where are we? Right in front of Gordon's jewelry store. And we're about to stop, Shorty. And we still have no pearls, no rubies, but plenty of trouble. And I'm afraid we're going to have more. You mean you're going across the street to Gordon's and lift that ruby like you said? Certainly. Mrs. Phillips is in trouble, and I'm going to help her. Uh-huh. 
I'd like to meet whoever's blackmailing that lovely old lady, Shorty. And that ruby is going to be my introduction. Okay, okay. So you meet him, so you take care of him. That old lady still stole the pearls. That's still a crime. I'll get those pearls back. And give her the ruby to put back, too. Then nobody will be hurt. Except our blackmailing friend. Well, what about the trap fire they set for <laughs> you? Oh, that? Well, that makes it more interesting, Shorty. You see this cigar? Yeah, yeah, sure, I see. Well, look. The center is hollowed out. Mm-hmm. That's why you're here. You brought me along because the center of the cigar is a hole in it? That's right. Now, when I come out of the store, I'll be smoking a cigar, and when Faraday grabs me, I'm going to be so surprised, I'm going to drop it. And you're going to pick it up. Me, boss? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up a butt just like the old days? <laughs> That's right, Shorty. And you're going to take very good care of it. Because in that hole in the cigar, there's going to be a 20-carat ruby. So long. Okay, Blackie. Good luck. Thanks. Good morning. Uh, hello there, Mr. Gordon. Uh, good morning, Mr. Blackie. Well, I'm busy right now with this young lady. Oh. Uh, Mrs. Phillips has your watch ready for you. Good morning, Mrs. Phillips. Uh, Beautiful morning, isn't it? Uh, you have my watch? Why, yes. <laughs> oh, it's this cigar. I'm sorry, Mrs. Phillips. Oh, oh, oh my. What lovely ruby. Uh, here's your watch, Mr. Blackie. That will be $5. Please, please don't touch the ruby. $5, huh? Well, thank you very much. Uh, here you are. Goodbye, Mrs. Phillips. Mr. Blackie, you shouldn't have... Goodbye, Mr. Gordon. I'll take another step, Blackie. Oh, Inspector Barrett. Oh. What? You you startle me. Yeah, I see. Now get back in that store and keep your hands in the air. Matthews? Yeah, Inspector. Now get the boys on all sides of Mr. Boston, Blackie. We're going back in the store and searching. Hey, the, the ruby's missing. Yeah, no, no. He took the ruby. Take it easy, take it easy, Mr. Gordon. Of course he took it. I told you he would, didn't I? Yes, but when will I get it back? Yes, as soon as we search Blackie. Which we're going to do in the back room right now, Mr. Gordon. Boys, are ready, Inspector. Good. Well, it's nice of you, Inspector, to have provided a police escort back into the store. Don't mention it, Blackie. You make bad bargains. What do you mean? You've only had that ruby 30 seconds. And it's going to cost you 30 years. <laughs> now, let's get back in the other room and start this search. Uh, by the way, Inspector... Don't forget to look in my pocket. Well, what did you do with that ruby, Blackie? <laughs> We've searched you from head to foot and we can't find it. Well, we must have it. I saw it on the tray just a minute before he came in. And after he left, it was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You arrested him before he could move from the door. Yeah. He must still have it. Well, uh, 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 you know, maybe I swallowed it. Very clever, Blackie. You're very clever. I've got an idea. Maybe you did swallow it. Are you kidding? Well, we'll soon find out. I'm going to see what you look like behind a fluoroscope. <laughs> I see. You want to get the inside story. Well, it seems as though Boston Blackie's plan to steal the ruby might have suffered disaster. However, we'll see about that in a moment. Right now, maybe it's the heat, but I definitely feel a poem coming on. Here goes. There was a young housewife named May, who, if you asked her, would say... My what? A delight. Yes, it's white. Rinso white. For Rinso said, hip, hip, hooray. Yes, many a woman cheers those rich, peppy Rinso suds. Not only because they help her to turn out such a dazzling Rinso white wash, but because they save her so much hard work and time. And these hot August wash days, that's something. Well, I think I just give up. If I had to pick up heavy loads of clothes... Put them in a steaming boiler, lift them out, scrub the light stop, out of them. Stop, I can't bear the whole idea. It certainly is different than the Rinso way. Heavens, yes. I just plop my dirty clothes into a tub full of rich Rinso suds, let them soak a little while, give the extra dirty places a few quick finger rubs, and they're ready to rinse. You hear that, ladies? It's a mighty fine prescription for a hot weather wash day or any wash day. Better get Rinso tomorrow. <laughs> And now back to Chester Morris as Boston Blackie. In order to deal with the unknown man who is threatening aged Mrs. Mary Phillips, Boston Blackie has stolen a 20-carat ruby from the Gordon jewelry shop and hidden it in a cigar. Inspector Faraday has been unable to find the ruby, but now has an idea that Blackie has swallowed it. I didn't swallow the ruby, Inspector. I'm strictly on a milk diet. You'll see, Blackie. As soon as you stand in back of that machine. Faraday, the fact that the ruby was 20 carats is throwing you a little. 
You see, a ruby is completely indigestible, believe me. Hey, it's funny. Now get back at that machine, Blackie. All right, all right. But supposing the ruby doesn't show up. Am I excused for the rest of the day, teacher? Get back at that bird, All right, all right. Now, how's this? Yeah. Now, just stand there. All right. Turn on the machine, Doc. All right. Hmm. How do I look, Inspector? It's an improvement. I can't... How does this work, Doc? Well, mm -hmm. any object such as a ruby will show up clearly if he has followed it. You see anything? Now, don't tell me you see a strange man and I'm going on a thing. Me neither. Okay, turn it off. Come on out, Blackie. All right, put your shirt on and then beat it. I can't hold you. Oh, bless you. Bless you, Faraday. Bless you. you know, it takes a big man to know when he's licked. I'm not licked yet. That's what I mean. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> Just a minute. Did you spread the rumor that I got away with a ruby, Shorty? Yeah, yeah. I spread the story all over town, just like you said, boy. Then if I'm lucky, this is the fish that swallowed the bait. Coming. So, how do you do? Wasn't Blakey? Yes, that's right. My name's Tom Elliott, Dan Blake. Thanks. All right, if I sit down? Certainly. Make yourself at home. You can give me the ruby you took from the Gordon jewelry shop this morning. I know you've got it. Oh, you do, huh? Well, why should I give it to you? I believe you're going to want to give it to me. And just why am I going to want to give you the ruby, Mr. Elliot? You know, Mrs. Noah. Ever meet a husband? A wonderful man. They're crazy about each other. Have been for 35 years. Well, what about it? Rather interesting story. You see, before he married her, that's 35 years ago, he escaped from prison. Of course, she didn't know anything about it when she married him. When did she find out? When I told her. Oh. I had to tell her, you see. If I had uh, come to him with this story, I'd have gotten nothing out of him. He'd have committed suicide and given himself up. I see. So, uh, so you want his wife because you, uh, you went to his wife because you knew you'd do anything to protect her husband. Even steal to keep him from going back to jail. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And her long and trustworthy service in the Gordon shop completed the setup. Well, you know, that's just about the way I figured it. Only I didn't know the details. Uh, I told them to you for one reason. Yes? Yeah? If you don't give me the ruby, I intend to turn John Phillips over to the police. Well, do I get it, Blackie? You get it. Good, and I uh, don't want any interference from now on, either. Let's understand that, too. I understand. All right, here's the stone. Now get out of here before I forget that your scheme is foolproof. Goodbye, Mr. Blackie. You're a very... Re What's up? Tell that man that just left here. Right. I'd like to know why a rat like that lives. And I'd also like to know where. Mr. Black. Oh, hello, Mrs. Phillips. Uh, may I come in? Please do, Mr. Black. Thanks. The police didn't find the ruby? No, of course not. But your friend, Mr. Elliot, called on me. He told you? Uh-huh, a... everything. Now look, Mrs. Phillips. I, uh, I guess maybe I'm a sentimental sort of a fella, but... I believe anybody who's gone straight for 35 years is entitled to a break. Oh, it sounds so wonderful to hear you say that. Why, well, there's a story in the papers almost every week about some governor pardoning a man who gives himself up after years of going straight, or well, providing he hadn't been convicted of a major crime. Well, you see, John had been gambling and signed it. Oh. I investigated his case. Of course, he doesn't know it. Well, he won't. Now, I think I have a plan that'll work. We have two things to do. Get back the pearls and the ruby and prevent Tom Elliott from talking. The first is easy. Uh, the second, well, <laughs> we've got a slim chance. Is there anything you want me to do? Yes, definitely. In half an hour, I want you to call Inspector Faraday and tell him that you know a man who escaped from jail 35 years ago. What? Now, please trust me, Mrs. Phillips. It's the only way I know that we can stop Elliott. But I don't see how that will stop him. Well, I, I couldn't do that to John. Well, don't you see you're doing it for John? Now, first of all, you're to tell Faraday that the man who escaped from jail 35 years ago is a man named... Oh, make up any name, say Fred Mullen. Um, then act a little bewildered. Don't tell him who you are and just say you know Mullins is free, but you don't know where he is. Then what do I do? Then you're to hang up. I don't understand, but if you say so, I'll do it. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Blackie. And that thank you comes from my heart. I was afraid my world had come to an end. Oh, Mrs. Phillips, this is only the beginning. Oh, come on. Let me see you smile. <laughs> Yeah, that's better. Bye. Hello? Shorty. Oh, who? 
Sure, boss. Say, I got that guy's hideout, Peg. It's uh, 1761 East 13th. Uh, uh, apartment 6B. Good. Now, listen, Shorty. I want you to call Faraday. Yeah? This guy's your Allenby, who happens to be in the city, and who also happens to have escaped from prison 35 years ago. Well, who's this Allenby, boss? Gee, I thought I knew him all. Oh, I just made it up. Oh. Play dumb, Shorty, and we'll have Mr. Faraday good and confused. <laughs> Won't be the first time. Yeah. Okay, Blackie, it's as good as done. Thanks. See you later. Inspector Faraday, I have some information. Yeah, who is it? Oh, that ain't important, but there's something that is. Huh? You know, I know a man who escaped from jail 35 years ago, and his name is Edward Allenby. Yeah? It'd be a feather in your cap if you arrested him. Look, I got enough feathers now to be an Indian chief. Where is this Allenby? I don't know. What jail did he bust out of? I don't know that either. Uh, what is this? April Fool's Day? Goodbye. Barry talking. I just wanted to tell you, Inspector, that a man named Fred Mullins escaped from jail 35 years ago. Hmm? You can find him if you hurry, but I don't know where you're to hurry to. But... Goodbye. Hey, 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 wait a minute. What is this? An epidemic of crackpot? Hello. Hello. You hung up. <laughs> Yeah, Faraday speaking. This is Blackie, Inspector. Oh. I've got a tip for you. I know a man who escaped... If you're going to tell me about somebody who was supposed to have broken out of jail 35 years ago, Blackie, I'll wring your neck. All right, Inspector. All right, then I won't tell you. Goodbye. Six o'clock. Getting out, please. Thank you. Oh, no, you don't, Elliot. No closing doors in people's faces. It isn't polite. You, uh, you mind if I come in? What do you want here? Well, I want that ruby I loaned you. And the pearls Mrs. Phillips gave you yesterday. Sorry. You do, eh? Uh-huh. You see, Mrs. Phillips is going to put them back in the store tomorrow morning when Mr. Gordon can find them. You'll think they were just misplaced. Your memory isn't very good, Blackie. You weren't supposed to interfere anymore, remember? And I was supposed to forget about John Phillips cracking out of jail. Yes, right? yes, yes, I know. Only that doesn't matter now. Now, let's have those pearls and that ruby, Elliot. Sorry, Blackie, but they're staying with me. And I'd advise you to stand still. Oh, a gun, huh? Pretty unoriginal. But I'd expect that from a small-time crook that blackmails old women. This gun has killed two men, Blackie. That's so. With me on the trigger. And you know what they say about uh, all things coming in three? <laughs> uh, the expression is all good things. Don't worry, this will be good. I'm going to leave town until I need more money, then I'm coming back and put a little pressure on Mrs. Phillips again. I know a fence out west who'll pay a fortune for those pearls and that ruby. My bag is packed and I'm on my way. But I'm, uh, I'm afraid I've got to kill you first. Well, you know that, uh, that 38 is liable to make a lot of noise. Yes, but this silencer will make sure nobody hears it. I see. Hey, keep your hand out of your pocket. Oh, I, I haven't a gun, Elliot. I just wanted to get my cigarette case. Okay? Yes. But it'll be the last cigarette you saw. <laughs> well, at least this is one way of breaking the habit. Will you have one? Sure. Hey, that's an expensive case. Yes. Now, take it with me when I go. I have a lovely gold inlay you might like also. Now, don't get too close. Just stand where you are and hold that case out as far as you can. I can reach. Oh, you mean like, uh, like this? Yes. Yeah. Thoughtful of you, Blackie. I'll take this. Ow! Sucker! Oh! I don't know when I've enjoyed doing anything so much. Those pretty little fingers of yours are going to hurt tomorrow, Elliot. So you killed two men, huh? Well, I can't wait to tell Faraday. Now, come on, hand over that jewelry, Rat. I'm in a hurry. I can't wait till I see the expression on a lovely little old lady's face. All right. Faraday, you've got me in jail, and I suppose you're sending my fingerprints out west. That's right, Elliot. Blackie finally got around to doing me a favor. You've got a little record in this city, too. You didn't tell Blackie that. I think we've got a priority on you. Doesn't matter where I go to jail. I just want to tell you this, Inspector. I've got a little information for you. Oh, yes? Yeah? Yes. I know a man who escaped from jail 35 years ago. You too? Look, Elliot, if I hear one more word out of anybody about some guy who was supposed to have busted out of jail 35 years ago, I'll bust that guy in half. <laughs> Uh, 
I sent for you, Blackie. On the counter, you've got a right to know. Oh, thanks. I sent this Elliot's fingerprints out west, and he's wanted for two murders, just as you said. Oh. Uh-huh. And for one right here in this city, too. No. Thanks for the tip, Blackie. How did you manage to catch up with him? Oh, a little old lady told me. Huh? Yes, so I put two and two together, to coin a phrase, and I said to myself, dear old Faraday, <laughs> he's been so nice to me lately, what better way of showing my appreciation than to make him a present of a murderer? <laughs> Thanks, Blackie. Oh, not at all, old man. But uh, by the way, now that you've looked inside my heart, certainly my stomach, did you ever recover the pearls and the rubies? Oh, you yeah. did. Didn't you hear what happened? No. Well, Gordon called to tell me that they were right in the shop all the time. No. Yeah. Can you beat that? Old Mrs. Phillips, who works there, found him in another drawer. Well, 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 well. Yeah. And they lived happily ever after. What'd you say? Oh, nothing, nothing. I I just said they lived happily ever after. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll hear a preview of next week's exciting adventure with Boston Blackie. Meantime, ladies, I have a real piece of advice for you about dishwashing. I've mentioned it before, but if you haven't done it already, I'd suggest that you tote that big green and yellow Rinso box up from the laundry and see how much simpler the job can be. Yes, Rinso's rich suds really go to town for you in the dishpan. Get dishes, pots, and pans gleaming in a jiffy. Rinso's kind to your hands, too. So get Rinso tomorrow, and be sure to use it on wash day so you can join in the chorus of women who sing their way through washing clothes like this. Rinso, Rinso, happy little wash day song. 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 But, Inspector, how do you know Boston Blackie's dead? I told you, Matthews. All I know is some guy called me on the phone and said that after I'd come down here to Blackie's apartment, I could pick up the remains. Who called you? I don't know. He hung up on me. You think it's another one of Blackie's tricks? Well, we'll know pretty soon. If it is, I'll break every bone in his body. So here we are, sixth floor. He's in 6B here. Hey, Chief, look. Huh? There's a guy flat on his face right outside the door. Blackie, I don't believe it. Gee, thumped off right outside his own apartment. Yeah. He's a swell guy, Matthews. One of the best. Sure, he got me sore now and then, and I used to rib him, but when it came right down to cases, he was a swell guy. I'll get the guy who did this if it's the last thing I ever do. Writing my epitaph, Faraday? Huh? I hate to disappoint you, but that body isn't mine. Boston Blackie. Summertime means warm weather, and that means more perspiration. Use Life Boy in your daily bath or shower to protect yourself. You'll love its rich, purifying lather. Remember, too, that of seven leading brands, Life Boy gives you the most soap for your money. And besides, it's the only soap especially made to stop... Be sure to listen at this same time next week for another exciting adventure with Boston Blackie. You can see Chester Morris as Boston Blackie on the screen at your favorite movie theater. Boston Blackie's latest Columbia picture is One Mysterious Night, soon to be released. Richard Lane appears as Inspector Faraday, music by Charles Cornell. This is Harlow Wilcox saying goodnight for Boston Blackie, brought to you by the makers of Rinso, the soap that gets clothes. Rinso White. This is the National Broadcasting Company. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.